all right, this video is for uh, checking subcooling on a R22 condenser. Right now you see the pressures on the low side are 54 PSI on this side and on this side, which is the high side, you have 140, okay? So the low side or vapor suction side, okay, you can refer to it as any of those, is about 55 PSI. The discharge high side or liquid line, okay, that is actually at 140 roughly PSI, G, uh, pound per square inch gauge. So we have them attached right here on the liquid line. The red always goes to the liquid and blue always goes to the vapor line. These valves have Schraders in them, Schrader valves. All right, and so when we attached our hoses in, it pressed on the Schrader valve and allowed refrigerant to come through the hoses and enter into our gauge. Our gauge set is shut right now. If this handle was open, it would connect from here to here. If this handle was open, it would connect from here to here. Both of them are closed, and you want to make sure they're closed while checking the refrigerant charge. Um, what you want to do is you want to let that system run for maybe 10 minutes, uh, and then after that, you can go ahead and check your refrigerant charge. So, this system has a thermostatic expansion valve, and it's uh, it actually has the bulb mounted outside on the suction line, so I can tell uh, that it does have a TXV. Uh, I've checked the subcooling on the rating plate. The rating plate is located right back here, and the rating plate says that it's calling for 15 degrees of subcooling. Subcooling is the temperature decrease in liquid form, so that's on this gauge. This is liquid. We're looking for the temperature decrease in liquid form. So we're going to take the temperature that's on this line right here, okay, and we're going to subtract that from the saturated temperature, which if you follow the needle back, it looks like it's right at about 80 degrees for R22 for saturation temperature. So let's go ahead and find out what the temperature is on the liquid line. What I, what I usually do is I use a multimeter with a temp probe. All right, so I use this temp probe right here with this multimeter in order to figure out the temperature. So, we can turn that on. It says it's 70.3 degrees. This little piece of metal right here, it's when you combine two pieces of metal, that's what makes up a thermocouple, two dissimilar metals. This is actually able to read the temperature here. I just touched it, so the temperature went up very, very rapidly, okay? The temperature on this little ball uh, is able to change very rapidly compared to something uh, that would look like a stick to, to read temperature with. Even if it's digital, it's not going to be that great compared to something that's very small. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mount this line on, and there's a couple ways to do it. You could have different type of uh, temperature probes, but in this case we're going to use a thermocouple style, and we are going to put some electrical tape onto the liquid line. And that's going to keep that piece of metal tight up against the pipe. We can also, if there's a, the sun beating on it, we can put a little piece of insulation on there as well in order to stop the heat transfer from the sun. So, right now, it reads 77 degrees on the liquid line. We take this head pressure discharge liquid pressure okay it's at 141 142 and it roughly reads 80 degrees saturated temperature this is like a actual pressure temperature chart built into your gauge okay so we met we minus 80 we actually minus uh, 78 from 80 and we come up with two degrees of subcooling so that means that um, we just barely have liquid going to the TXV so what we need to do is actually um, increase the charge. If the subcooling is low, then that means you need to add refrigerant. All right. So um, R22, that can get charged in as vapor. Okay. If you're charging it in as liquid, you want to charge it through a liquid vaporizer. Check out my next videos for charging HVAC systems. This is AC Service Tech. Hope you enjoyed yourself.